Hi, I'm Bowtie Dave. Well, good morning uh, or afternoon or evening, whenever you're watching this. Uh, today, we're going to have a very special episode of uh, Bowtie Life. I have uh, my good friend who's coming all the way down here from his very exclusive restaurant down on Grand Boulevard. Uh, <laughs> right next to Emeralds, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> good morning, everyone. <laughs> this is Cousin Bowtie Mark. Uh, that's what we're going to call him today. But uh, anyway, uh, we're going to be talking about the sun chokes today. And uh, we're going to cover a little bit of, we're going to harvest some. And, and uh, if you've seen any of the other videos, where I've covered this, boy, that thing is still coming out, isn't it? Uh, where I've covered this, um, this thing has been covered with flowers. And I'm going to let Mark smell this and tell me what he thinks it smells like. Just stick your nose right up to it and give it a sniff. Oh, wow. Wow. Isn't that the coolest thing? That is so strong. Tell the camera what it smells like. It smells like chocolate. Yeah. Yeah. It really does. Wow. It's amazing. That's, um, that is amazing. <laughs> that's the mind-blowing thing about this flower. That is fascinating. So, and, and that thing was covered, and the, the, the pollinators love it. Uh, the, uh, the monarch butterflies. In fact, if you saw my uh, one of my videos clear in the uh, melon patch, um, had uh, a little segment where there are four monarch butterflies just clinging on in the big wind yeah. uh, that we had a few week, a couple weeks ago. But uh, we're going to have a little bit of an interesting day. It's Saturday, so we got the lawn mowing next door. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> we got car washing over here. <laughs> yep. All kind of stuff going on. Yeehaw. Mm -hmm. So, but hopefully this uh, E-Meat Luna will be, be uh, good enough for us and pick up our voices over and cut out the ambient noise. Now, but, can I ask you, yeah. has this uh, plant existed already? No, it did not. This came as a little tuber, and we're going to see some of the tubers that, that uh, this created as we harvest them, came uh, right. in little tubers from uh, my friend Barbara, mm -hmm. and uh, she gave me uh, three of them, three or four of them. No, she actually gave me five. I gave two to my backyard neighbor, and uh, I planted three here. In fact, we planted that together on May 20th in video in the garden tour, the front and side garden tour on in May. Wow. So we actually planted it, and here it is, November What, what is, is today? It? 12th. Yeah. November 12th. And, uh, um, yeah, November 12th. And those things just rock. Yeah. Well, eventually, oh, there's a monarch right there. Yeah. It's about to fly past your head. By oh, second. there it is. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, this, it's really been an amazing plant and it was just covered with yellow flowers. You can actually see, hopefully see in the camera, the uh, back ones back there are actually dying off, which is when they start to get harvested. Uh, they say October, November here in uh, panhandle of florida maybe even december uh these front ones that are still real green i'm going to leave them for a while longer interestingly enough you can store these right there in the ground oh wow you can let them go because they're actually a perennial okay. and they'll stay good in yeah. the ground and when you need them you just go out and get a few that's awesome so yeah it's, it's supposed to be easy very versatile yeah, yeah. now the, the jerusalem artichoke i gotta explain about the, the history mm -hmm. of this name because number one it's not from jerusalem okay it, number two, it's not an artichoke. Right. It's more related to a sunflower. Um, so there's a little bit of uh, controversy on how I got the name Jerusalem artichoke. Uh, one of the uh, ones that I believe is that when it came from uh, Italy, uh, the Italian word for um, sunflower is girasole. And it kind of sounds like Jerusalem. And they think girasole. that that might have gotten... Um, you know, converted somewhere along yeah. the way into Jerusalem. Right. Uh, the artichoke, I have no idea where it came from, but there is a history to this. Number one, uh, back in the uh, 20s, during the during the World Wars, during World Wars, um, they were a very good source of nutrients. Oh, and, okay. And uh, they they uh, they were they were in fact when they were doing the food stamps uh, back in World War II. Right. This is one thing you did not need food stamps to get. Oh, okay. So, right. so it wasn't part of the rationing. Exactly, part of the rationing yeah. and stuff. You could get this 
as much as you wanted. And so people planted these. Following that, here's the interesting thing. Following that, they that butterfly, yeah, by the I way, know. There's, there's all around over. us. Yeah, probably not just one. But anyway, so um, the interesting thing is that after that, they became they're they're really invasive. And there were some places in the country where you could be fined if you had it in your garden a few years wow. after that because they were so prolific. Yeah. And uh, so it's really had a sordid history. About the 1960s, uh, the name sunchoke was. Uh, 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 given it by a produce manufacturer, okay. and uh, so it has a really interesting name history. Yeah. Um, I had no idea but, it was so prolific in the, in during World War One. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, yeah, a lot of people grew it, and so here's the inter- here's what I find most interesting. I'm a diabetic. This is supposed to be the diabetic's substitute for potatoes. Now it has inulin, which is not the bad carb; it's a good carb. You don't count it against your carb count when you're taking it, and uh, it's supposed to be good for you. And there's actually some new studies out of, uh, I want to say somewhere in Asia, I can't remember exactly where, there are some new studies that need more testing, but they thinking that possibly sun chokes, the tubers, can prevent diabetes. Which is absolutely amazing. That's huge. Yeah, that That's is enormous. amazing. Yeah. And, and so, I like, um, I, you know, I'll share right away. You know, I have no idea what this is going to taste like. Yeah. I can only say I'm fascinated by the fact this can actually be described as a potato substitute. Yeah. So that is very intriguing. Now, this is the reason why you're here. <laughs> <laughs> why did I, why did Cousin Bowtie travel here? <laughs> so we called uh, Cousin Bowtie here from his exclusive uh, restaurant in Orlando, right there on the Disney Resort. It, it's like $500 a plate. Because it looks just, exactly like my home kitchen. There you go. Yes, absolutely. So, yeah, we got him here from his exclusive restaurant. It's like $500 a plate. Did I mention that? Yes, it's very expensive. But uh, anyway. Wow, I can't afford to eat there. <laughs> we want you to be the uh, tasting expert. I love good food, but I don't oh, yes. describe very good. And I've had some of your cooking, and it is out of this world. I well, just, thank you. I did I eat some that. of that lasagna last night, and uh, after we ate out, mm-hmm. I ate some of that lasagna, and it was the, the spice. I got to tell you, that yeah. kind of dish, um, the spices get worked into it. You know exactly. Oh, it was mm-hmm. delicious. You got a good mix there. I got a. What I do is I, I simmer the sauce for hours and hours and oh, hours, yeah. and that's the key. It deepens the flavor profile. Anytime and, you do um, that, yeah, yeah, it is very very deep flavor profile. That was, mm-hmm. that was most definite. Yep. So anyway. and I, my interest, yeah. just really quick, thirty seconds. Yeah, go ahead. My interest in food. I've always enjoyed uh, great food, you Absolutely. know, always willing to pony up the money when we had it available to go to, you know, try things. But now when I, since I've retired, uh, I've become the, the head chef, bar washer. <laughs> so my interest in cooking is soared. So I'm still learning, trying new things. And, uh, you know, so this is fascinating, you know, this end of yeah. discovering new foods, how to incorporate them into, into some of the dishes I'm cooking or and that kind of a thing. So I appreciate the opportunity. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And he's bringing those new lessons he's learning to his exclusive restaurant down on Broadway in New York City. Uh, <laughs> like what, your fourth or fifth opening? I oh, think I lose track. I yeah, don't know. I know. It's, it's They're amazing. opening so often. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, <laughs> all that being said, um, I do want to give a side note here on the artichoke, and this is probably the only negative thing that, uh, and, and incidentally, um, Mrs. Bowtie is off on a project this weekend, so she sent her best friend's husband here, who's mm-hmm. also my good friend, uh, <laughs> to come and supervise to make sure I don't blow up the house while she's out of town for the weekend. <laughs> but uh, Yes, we're here without adult supervision. We are without adult supervision. Ooh, that might be fun. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah, I texted Barbara, the lady who gave me these ones that were harvesting, and I almost said, you want to come and supervise? <laughs> so, anyway, um, the other thing is sometimes uh, these artichokes have been called the fartichoke because uh, they cause That's gastric hilarious. distress. Yeah, it is kind of <laughs> kind of hilarious. Um, here's the thing about it, and, and I want to back up. Um, years and years ago, about, uh, boy, it's been over 10 years ago, I incorporated... Freshly ground flaxseed into my diet. Every mm-hmm. lunch, 
I get, uh, I work my way up to two tablespoons of, of freshly ground flaxseed. And we were talking about freshly grated, freshly ground. Yeah, and I remember uh, you mentioned yeah. the flaxseed. And it's supposed to be fresh. You don't get the pre-ground stuff if you do this because it starts to oxidize and lose its nutrients mm, okay. uh, and, and its benefits for, for me for being a diabetic, but just in general. And so um, anyway, I read a story about a lady who just put, started putting two tablespoons in her daily diet and she ended up in the hospital because it clogged her up. Uh, and then wow. I read further down the article that talks about how you're supposed to introduce it gradually. Start with half a uh, tablespoon for, yeah. you know, a week. And then work your way up to a full tablespoon. And you, you yeah, your body has weeks. to learn the process. Exactly. Yeah. And so that's kind of how I feel about this sunchoke. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm reading uh, and seeing about it. Um, the, uh, pope, the pepper potpourri was talking about if you start in little, um, you know, quantities and build your way up that it can actually be a, a very beneficial thing for you so now is this something um that you would add incorporate into a, a, a main dish or would it be more I believe of a side so. dish I, i'm from the sounds of it it really sounds like anywhere you use potatoes wow rachel ray has a has a soup recipe i'd love to try one day um but i saw about fermenting we may be we may get into some fermenting in this series uh, and yes, this is going to be a series. I think mm -hmm. we're we're talking about a few different recipes. We're talking about cooking some on a skillet, cooking some in the oven, and uh, fermenting some. Oh, oh, what was the other thing? The uh, hash browns. Oh, the, yeah. The we, we're going to see if we yep. can get a grater to do some freshly ground yeah. hash, hash browns. Yep. Um, so we'll just see so where this goes. We'll just and, have know, to see where the series goes. How and, it tastes uh, and where it goes. Yeah. yeah. Now this is this video is coming out on the 14th of November, which is two days from now. Um, I will say. The October Garden Tours will start tomorrow. It's on the board. It's ready to schedule on the 15th. Uh, keep your eye out. It's uh, 6 p.m. Central Time, the first of the three Garden Tours for October. So some of these things are kind of out of order. You're going you're gonna to see that. Like, uh, I don't know if, uh, I've, if you follow on Facebook, you know we've already filled some of the back beds for the new season. Uh, you're not going to see that on the October Garden Tour, so it's going to be a little messed up. We're using new software. We're, get, we're getting there. We're, we're, it's learning, growing pains. And I got to see, say, uh, it is so cool having a chance to see this in person. Yeah. What you've created, in the YouTube videos are great. However, you know, it's never the same as you're walking that path yeah. and seeing it right there. It's true. It's, it's true. It's pretty amazing stuff. Oh, maybe we can pick some ripe strawberries. Oh, if you saw my, uh, I'm always update, up for that. There's a, uh, there's, they were little, little white strawberries I showed right at the end of my pepper update. Oh, maybe, okay. Maybe they're ripe today. We'll have to check that. And okay. that's the joy of living in North Florida is here. It is almost middle of November. I know. And we're talking about, let's check on the strawberries. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> that is you got to love that. I've got jalapenos everywhere. This bush yeah. right here is half a dozen nice jalapenos on it. Mm -hmm. I have two more plants over there in the strawberry patch. Are, yeah, you watch that uh, pepper video. Yeah, the Florida uh, growing season is insane. It is. It really is. And, you know, considering that uh, my Thai hot plant, I've mentioned this plant several times. My Thai hot plant last winter started producing in May of last year, mm -hmm. and it just died having produced wow. every single month since then. That's incredible. So what's that, like 18 months? Yeah. Every, all through the winter. Of course, we didn't get a frost last winter. Not a single frost. Yeah. It was a very mild winter. Normally, yeah. we get frosts here, but we didn't this winter. So, okay, well, we're going to start off th this video with just harvesting and cleaning these things and getting them ready and uh, see what they look like. Cause they're just got to have one more snort. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I tell incredible. you what, I smelled these one time and I actually ate the flower to see what it tastes like, and it tastes like grass. Really? <laughs> I think it there's did, a way something. Not you like do a chocolate it. bar. No, it, it was not a chocolate bar. <laughs> I had to try. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hear you. <laughs> so, okay. Uh, well, we're going to move the camera and get over here and do some harvesting. So, ready? Sounds good. All right. All right, so here we are, and uh, Bowtie Mark is standing, cousin Bowtie Mark is standing here just off camera, <laughs> and uh, I just wanted to cover a couple of the tools that I have seen people use. Number one, I like my Hori Hori. This one's from Corona Tools. This is a stainless steel blade. It has a serrated edge on here, a little measuring thing. It's nice for cutting. But Definitely doubles as a home defense weapon. Yes, it, <laughs> it definitely can. <laughs> 
But uh, one thing that I've seen a lot of people say is do not use a shovel harvesting those because you'll cut them up and you don't want to do that. Um, oh, you know what? We need to, we're going to need a way to cut these. I don't, oh, here we go. I have a saw. Well, there you uh, go. But anyway, so the pitchfork is used to loosen the soil. And, uh, but first, I was going to use some loppers, but hopefully this will work. Um, this here, this is pretty good size. Uh, it's a, and it's sturdy, like really sturdy. I'm really impressed. But I'm yeah, that's not bending at all. No, it's not. Very woody. Okay, there we go. I'm gonna, oh, hey, there's a, there's something up there. The string. I had several iterations of stringing this thing up. And obviously, they're still in effect. So we're going to pull this out here. Still has a few flowers on it, but it's kind of um, struggling. However, the interesting thing about this, and I did want to show this on camera, um, there aren't very many pests that affect this thing, which is... Very exciting for Panhandle of Florida because we have every pest imaginable. But these leaves are not eaten. They're not chewed no, on. Oh, everything's intact, Everything is really. intact, yes. Isn't that amazing? Yeah, you'd think it would be eaten alive. Seriously, yeah. There's a new shoot right there. Oh, yeah. Look at that. So, yeah, anyway. Yeah, of them. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. They're all over. This thing might have shot up again. Interesting. Okay, well. Oops, let me not take out the lilies. There's that. And we'll use this to chop off some of these smaller ones. I'm le I should have left a little more here for a handle, but I forgot. Um, it doesn't sound like these things come up like a potato plant where everything's stuck to it, which is what I was hoping. So we're going to see what we got. I'm going to start off actually just now. Okay, so actually I, need, I do need to mention one thing. And I'm going to pop up a picture on the on the video here, but I, this irrigation head right here, I dug in just last weekend, and as I was digging way over here, I came up with these really interesting uh, roots, and I'll show you the picture here, um, but uh, I think that's from Little this. roots from here? From here, yeah. They were kind of growing out this way, and they got, as I got closer here, um, those little weird roots were coming out, but... Anyway, so well, it's actually pretty well. Let me well. get this out of your way. Let me see the fork. Yep. I'm going to go ahead and loosen up. Now, this is a bit of an invasive species, so you do have to be careful with it. Um, and if you are not familiar with how to care for an invasive species, you, you might want to not just jump into throwing this in the garden. It is not that hard. Well, I can feel things popping all over the place. A lot of roots. Yes, there's a lot of roots in there. But if uh, if you just take a little precaution. Um, now, this bed is where I hear these popping going on everywhere. This bed is where these things are going to grow. Oh, look, here's one growing way out over here. There's a new one. Yeah, that was offshoot. Yep. This bed is almost where these things are going to live for a few years until I get bored with them. Um, and I don't know what I'm skewering or not skewering here, but boy, this thing is stuck in here. Yeah, it doesn't want to come out easy. Anyway, so yeah, this bed is actually going to come out about another four or five feet, and they're going to live here again. Uh, I am going to plant some of these tubers. Oh, look at that. Now, there are a lot of roots of other things in here, too. Oh, look at there. Wow. Our first ones. <laughs> look at that. Cool. How cool is that? That is cool. Oh, look at that. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Now, this was <coughs> one tuber that was actually bigger than that. It started out bigger than that. Oh, my goodness. That thing, those came out from way out here. Yeah. Look, there's one right there. Oh, oh look at the size of that. Oh, my goodness. That's huge. It's enormous. Okay. Oh, look at there. Yeah, so you can see. Oh, yeah. This is invasive. It grew out yeah. that far out from the plant. you got to really dig this. Oh, I saw one right there. Nope. you got to really uh, be careful with this. 
the the roots are white these um yellowish roots i don't know what these are i don't think that part of it i think that's something else that's growing in here mm. i do have a nice plethora of of uh weeds and all kinds of stuff growing here that I have been pulling out regularly. I'll tell you what, Mark, um, inside, just inside the garage door, there is a pantry there. Mm -hmm. And give me one of the big silver bowls on the left about shoulder level. Okay. Give me the biggest one, because I think we're going to need stuff to put this in, like a lot of stuff. More artichoke. There's more. Oh my goodness. We're going to have a crop today. I guess the bad part is I don't know how far these roots have gone. That is the root of something else right there. It could be the fig tree. I don't know. I don't think it is. So there's that. There's another one that's grown up, and those uh, Jerusalem artichokes growing up there. So okay, working my way around here with my hands. You find some more? Uh, yeah, just a little bit. Oh, here we go. I'm getting closer to. I did. I pulled up another uh, sprout here. I, do, I think I may have pulled it off. But it's the bulbule things that is what we're going after. And we are going to clean up these in the video, and then we'll start the uh, cooking videos. Start recording the cooking videos. Oh, my goodness. Look at this. Look at that big. So we're not even in. The, oh, look here. Here's, here's my favorite part. Oh, yeah. Perfect. You want to find those in your soil. Good worm. Yeah. One of the reasons why you don't use sharp implements in your soil is... As a side note while you're doing that, yeah. I wanted to just mention, wow, look at the just the black dirt you have. Yeah, now this You've is... You've got a highly, highly, yeah. um, you know, that's perfect soil. This is the equestrian compost that I get for free at Kelly Plantation. Mm -hmm. And uh, it goes down... Oh, see, there's a... Look, there's a root that's heading out. Oh, yeah. I'm going to follow that because... That's probably got something attached. Part of taking care of an invasive species is, is making sure you get all those little things stretching out like that. And it broke off. Oh, well. But in our part of Florida, you know, you've got yeah. all the sandy sand. soil. It's pure sand, white so, sand. So to do what you're doing, that's, yeah. that's required to, if you're going to be successful. This in is definitely a good illustration of why I'm planting in pure compost. Now the nutrients here. Wow. I don't know. That can't be from that fig tree, can it? That's a heck of a root, though. Yeah, I think it's from the sycamore. I don't know though. Ooh, watch your self there. Okay, so I'm working my way all the way around, and now we're going to get down to the nitty gritty. Now I do try to. Uh, exercise as much no dig as I can in my garden um, things like this though no I'm not choice. sure how much you can no dig it <laughs> 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 but oh my goodness look at what we got here well he didn't want to give up easy it did not want to give up Actually, look at that look at that wow wow that is hot. huge this is solid this is a massive so Right here somewhere is the mother, and I don't see it. I wonder if the mother actually became part of this. Now tell me, tell me real quick, um, what do you mean the mother? The the actual original tuber that I planted. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, oh my goodness. Is that it? No, it's not. It's huge though. It's enormous. What on earth? I just dug that up. Oh, here's another one. What do we do with this? <laughs> Another bountiful <laughs> harvest. <laughs> this, folks, this is one plant. This is one single plant. These plants grew. I wish I had measured it. In fact, maybe we'll measure it. 
Uh, they, they, it grew extremely tall. Now there are over 200 cultivars of the sunchoke and 200 different kinds of sunchoke. So I don't know what kind these are. Um, wow, I that's a lot of varieties. Yeah, some are tall, some are short. In fact, these, these others that are right here are a little over half as tall here. Go ahead and see if we can break out of that. I'm gonna dig around here, uh, see if I can find any more. I think we're about down to it because I'm digging in, oh. Oh, there's one. I'm actually digging in sand, which is underneath the compost. I did not till the compost in. In fact, what I did is I put down cardboard and then put about six inches of compost on top of it and left it. I am not finding anything else in here. So I'm going to be the optimist and say, oh, there you go. Good idea. Yeah be optimist and say that is going to be it for this plant. I was thinking we might have to harvest two plants. But oh, wow. we've got tons. Oh my goodness. Here's a saw. This, this is, might cut faster. Whew. Another abundant harvest. Yes. In the Bowtie Garden. Yes. Wow. That is amazing. You just got to text alert on my banking system that I have never heard of it says my they've detected unusual account activity on my account oh that's not good they want me to click their link and provide my password I don't know if you folks <laughs> can see this look yeah. at the size of this yeah hold, yeah hold right there that is amazing my goodness yeah look at I got to show this closer look at the root structure in here what is up with that? There's roots down here. That is massive. So this particular artichoke was one of the ones that Barbara gave me. We planted it on May 20th. Oh, there, look, it came out. Oh, look at that. Oh, wow. We planted it on May 20th on camera together. That's a big old three and now you get to experience the maturity yeah and the amazing way it grew that is just amazing oh my goodness it just peeled out from right there wow wow okay i can't wait to try some of this we're gonna spend uh time on the next video was there anything else that we we're gonna do on this video i think that was it we were gonna yeah harvest them and uh Oh, well, no, we're going to clean them. We're going to go in and get them cleaned up. That's what we're going to do because we want our, I want my first taste of this. So <laughs> let's go on to that part of this video and then we'll call it quits because we're going to go to the cooking videos. That is one plant, folks. Oh, my goodness. Incredible. That is something else. That's a meal for four right there. You want to measure yeah. the biggest one? Just Yeah, that's a... That's a good reference point. There's that thing is four inches long on the longest side. Or a little over four inches. That's that is just amazing. Okay. We're gonna real quick measure this. Here, hold this uh mm -hmm. that right there. Got and it. we gotta add maybe four inches to whatever we get here. So it's this stem right here. So over twelve feet. Wow. Over twelve feet tall. That's amazing. All right, folks, well, here we go. Got sidetracked like I normally do. <laughs> We're going to go on in and get these cleaned up and get a final shot of the, the beautiful harvest. Amazing harvest. Yes. There is a welcome addition to the garden. You take care, little buddy. All right, so here we are. With a bountiful harvest, I cannot, I, I just still can't get over. It's amazing. Yeah, that is the neatest thing. And, and the way the the stems, where's the, here's this one here. Oh, there's still root in there. I, I mean, uh, stem. Wow, that's just somehow. So there's a lot of dirt in here. Put this up here. There we go. There is a lot of dirt in here, which is true of anything. And they are kind of nook and cranny-ish. So... Uh, I'm not going to save those. 
Yeah, it takes a bit know. to rinse out all that dirt. Yeah, it does take a bit, and I, I did some research on videos and stuff, and uh, that was the biggest thing. You really want to just get a tub of, oop, not hot water. Oh, gone it. So at this point in the video, we lost sound. But we pretty much washed up the artichokes, breaking them apart so we could get in the little nooks and crannies and crevices and discovered some voids in the uh, artichokes themselves that were very peculiar. We thought maybe they were from insects or something, but we never found any evidence of that. I think the final conclusion is that it might have been just where the tuber grew around a clump of dirt of some kind. We made sure to cut them out and so on. There was a lot of dirt in here and we knew we should not be flushing this down the drain. So we took another approach. Nasty. Oof. <laughs> oh, I think that had mostly dirt in it. <laughs> This is bow tie probably wants her bowl back. <laughs> All right. All right. So join us in the next video to find out about uh, the pomegranate and date jelly. <laughs> Fantastic. We're doing this all out of order. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching the harvesting and cleaning and history of the sun choke. Um, that was fun to make. I, I had really enjoyed learning about it. I the, did too. the history of it and what it does and everything else. So I love in your videos you give the the background. In I try to. I, I really am enamored with history. Because despite that. what whether you enjoy history or not, you, you find yourself kind of caught into your stories mm -hmm. and enamored with it, and uh, and then you makes you appreciate what you're cooking, absolutely, what you're eating, absolutely, yeah. yeah. And there is a lot of history in our food that I think is important. Mm -hmm. So all right, well, all that being said, we will see you, and we're going to start making stuff with this. Uh, we're gonna do a little taste test first. Uh, the uh, sound cut out on the segment of video where we tasted it, so we're not gonna tell you anything about it until we get to that <laughs> at the beginning of the next video. <laughs> Sounds like <laughs> playing. <laughs> and Bowtie Life continues. Bowtie mm -hmm. Life continues, so thanks for watching along. Be sure to share the video with your friends on social media. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you have not done so already, and uh, click thumbs up. And those are three free things you can do to help build the community and uh we we we're, we're working on this and kind of the beginning of um of bow tie life here so inviting you all to be a part of it so uh as always want to say it with me how do i end all my videos go ahead oh. <laughs> <laughs> i put him on the you spot i lost yeah, you